All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is HD StarCraft, of course. And I'm here to bring you guys another Wings of Liberty broadcast. Cannot wait, because today, here and now, I have got two really, really good players for you guys. So I'm so excited. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, let's just introduce the players. Map is Daybreak, by the way. This has been like the standard map for the last year <laughs> and it's still the, like one of the best maps in the map pool anyways the pink zerg player is going to be none other than acers bly and uh, i believe bly took second place at bucharest dreamhack bucharest so he's really really good i think he lost an urchio he's so good and he's one of the best zerg players right now outside of korea but guess what man he is playing against one of the best players inside Korea. It is Fnatic Alive. And Alive is like this machine, man. Uh, if you could equate him to anything, he would be like the Terminator. Uh, so he <laughs> he is going to be the Red Terror player up here in the top right-hand corner. And uh, let's see if he can take out Scarlet's teammate, Bly. Yeah, both of these guys are actually... Uh, Scarlet and uh, Bly are both on Acer. And, uh, you know... Alive is the Terminator, uh, Scarlet is the Zerg Queen, I don't know what Bly would be, I guess he'd be like the Zerg Virus if you could, if you would, uh, he's, he's pretty good at creep spreading if my, if my memory serves me correctly, so he kind of just spreads his influence all over the planet or the platform or wherever map he's on, which is Daybreak by the way. And uh, let's see what happens, man, this is going to be a really high level, top notch Zerg versus Terran, and I, I'm really excited because you know what? I haven't casted a ZVT in a long time. I've been doing a lot of HOTS games, and I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't really been getting any good high-level uh, Zerg versus Terrans in HOTS. So I said, well, since I'm doing Wings of Liberty right now, let's just find a really good Wings of Liberty matchup, and this is probably going to be one of the higher-profile ones. This is from the Rit the Ritnix Russian tournament, the RSL, and all right, let's just get right into it. That drone just made it by barely near-death experience right there for the drone. Seven HP. It's gonna get a full scout off inside of a live space, and it will see a double refinery. And usually, when you see Terrans do that, one thing you gotta watch out for: quick starport play because they can get the early medevacs out. You could also, you should also be wary of just mass racks uh, with stim and uh, combat shields coming pretty quickly as well. And it's actually pretty common. You know, most Terrans get the double refinery right after the CC and the the uh, barracks. So basically, just telling you guys all the things that Terran have in this matchup. They don't have, <laughs> they do not have Widow Mines. So that's, I guess, a point I'm trying to make here is just because you see two gases doesn't mean you're going to see Widow Mines. Because, of course, they don't exist yet. And, uh, all right. Well, what is this SCB going to be doing right now? Just checking out the scenes, these two Zerglings. And uh, he is probably going to have a near-death experience because you know what? An SCV might have a jetpack, but it is not faster than a Zergling. That must mean the Zerglings are actually really fast. If you guys ever watch StarCraft II scale down like this, and you, you actually like watch like a cinematic or something, remember that original cinematic in Broodware where the Zergling like, claws its way through 10-inch steel and rips the Marine's head off? Yeah, Zerglings are actually pretty damn scary. That's the point. I'm trying to make so even with jetpacks man years in the future we might be living in outer space but we better watch out for those little zerglings or and then not to mention hydras and all those other scary scary units and queens man queens are dangerous too although they devolved they went from a flying unit to a ground unit ah oh, brood war the nostalgia anyways what is gonna happen in this game we do have a factory with reactor but it's not making what is it? Widow Mines. That's right. It's making Hellions. So we are going to have a Hellion play here from the Terran player. And like I said before, probably going to see Quick Starport. So he's actually not going to go with an early bio place base play. It's what he's doing here. What Alive is planning to do is some type of Marine Hellion drop. And oh no, he's actually going to go for a Banshee with that tech lab. Okay. I thought that was a reactor coming on the racks and didn't check. So that is a tech lab. So we are going to have Banshee play coming out here from Alive. But the Overlord sees it. Now, will Alive fake the cloak upgrade? Oh, yeah. He's faking the cloak upgrade. And the thing here is that was pretty close to the end of the life of that Overlord. So I don't know if Alive 
is actually, you know, I think he just did it because, hey, why not? You get most of your money back, and maybe I can make the Zerg overcommit to air defense. But I don't think that, uh, I, don't, I don't think that Bly is tricked by that. Because if there was Cloak coming, that would have been researching way long ago. So I don't think he's going to throw too much in anti-air defense here. Um, and he's got a pretty secure wall here. Uh, there's no way those, those Hellions are getting inside. Try as they might, as skinny as they might be, and as quick as they might be, they're not getting past queens and spores and, and evo chambers. So, you know what? Bly, all he has to worry about right now is that early Banshee, and I think, you know, he's got spores, one at least in each base. He's got one right here. He's got... Nah, he doesn't have one back here. So then, like I said, Bly not overreacting to seeing the potential fake cloak upgrade, which it was. And we'll see if this Banshee really can do any damage. It will require the Zerg two queens to save her babies. And save her babies that Bly must, because you don't want to lose a lot of drones to a Banshee. Right now, that guy is killing about five drones so far, or that girl. And Alive is going to be able to make it out of there, so yeah, a good starting harass for Alive. And he keeps a Banshee alive so he can repair, he can incorporate it into his army. You can do whatever the hell you want. And back at home, we've got Double Engineering Bay Macro CC, so you know, you guys know what that's, that means. Of course you do. That means that Alive is going to transition into Mass Bio here. And he will have siege tanks coming pretty soon too with the tech lab coming on the factory. The whole idea behind Alive's build was to get early eco, get a little bit of harassing him with a Banshee but not lose it, maybe harass with the Hellions, and then transition into mass biological mech play. And yeah, that, that's the way to play StarCraft 2 uh, against Zerg. Biomech is still the best strategy, but one thing you've got to be careful about against Zerg in the late game, that is Broodlord Infester. It is well considered to be, by many, the biggest and most fearsome deathfall of all. So, if that's the case, as a Terran player, you do have to uh, you do have to watch out for that. You never want to get into the super late game with Zerg. No, but then again, you've got Alive at the controls, and he is, like I said, the Zerg. He's the Terminator. Uh, Terminator and the Zerg Exterminator. You could, you could call him whatever you want, man. He just owns in StarCraft 2. That's all That's all I'm going to say about that. And here comes Alive here. He's got two medevacs coming around the south end of the map. Has the Viking here to check for Overlords. That's really good awareness. I mean, that's just good execution of a drop, you know? This is how generals play. Really top-level players, top-level generals, if you will, in the real world. They clear the LZ before they bring in the medevacs. And these two medevacs are going to go in completely un, you know, unknown to the Zerg player. At least now they know, now Bly knows, but it's too late because that's that's 16 Marines with Stim and 1-1 one, one inside of his mineral field. So that's a lot of drones that just died right there. They were just too slow, end of the pack, couldn't make it out. And now the spawning pool is going to go down. Last minute transfuse, not enough. An investor dies too. And if these 16 Marines die, it doesn't even matter. They even get a queen. Will the medevac make it out? Nope. Will not. So that was incredible. And, uh, you know, Alive just showing why he is one of the best Terran players out in the world today. Bly is going to have to do, like, he's going to have to go into Korean mode right now. He's going to have to, he's going to have to go hunker down, really focus, and try to catch back up in this game because if he doesn't, if he doesn't do something drastic, at it, and it's very hard to come back against a player like Alive. Once, once Alive gets ahead of you, it's he is macro will carry him, literally carry him into the next level, like into Super Saiyan mode. And then, uh, what are you gonna do about that? So, we'll see. A couple of Zerglings coming around over here to this orbital command, but Alive's already all over it. Got a squadron of Marines there plus a bunker. Good Sim City with the bunker too. You know, it keeps. It keeps him safe. It's against the CC and the gas, so it's hard for Zerglings to get in there and surround. Bly does have Infestors, though, and he might look to do something. He's also got a Banshee up here at this hatchery. Gonna be able to get the kill or force a cancel here. Bly, if he's not paying attention, could lose his hatchery. And 300 minerals, too! Oh, okay. I was gonna say, that would have been terrible. Nice, uh, nice drone cancel into a new hatchery, though. That's actually kind of hard to do because you have to time it so that when the drone, when the hatchery cancels into the drone, that there's not a volley coming from the Banshee because then you could lose the drone. So, or, you know, you could take serious damage on the drone, so. Anyways, Bly, 
going to get a great fungal right there. And that's good. That's that's good for Bly. He needs every little every little thing he can take right now. He'll he, he'll take it, man. This is one of those games where you have to get you have to take whatever the opponent gives you. And if he gives you a, a hand packaged prize of Marines like that with the fungal growth, you better take it. So that was a good good start for Bly to get some momentum back in this game. StarCraft 2 is very much just like any sport, a game of momentum. But this could look to do a ton of damage here. There's a Spore Crawler though. Spore Crawler will do a little bit of damage against the Medivac, but the Marines are going to drop right next to the Spire. Now, will Fnatic Alive go for the Drones or the Spire? Looks like Zerklings are already here. And the Marines trying to take down that Spire, but the Spire just having a little bit too much HP. And the Medivac gets out, but it uh, <laughs> doesn't look like any of the Marines did. So that was another good play by Bly, who's starting, I think, to, to work a little momentum into his game. We can see the positional shift in power right now. Look at Bly. He's got pretty good creep spread on the map. He is on five bases, too. And his drone count is at 92 right now. So, you know, while his supply might not be all there yet, very soon, man, once he gets his, his hive units on the field, which, by the way, he's making four ultras right now, then he's gonna be in a good spot, but it looks like Alive coming in with another Medivac. Gonna go for that Spire, but maybe the Queen first, because it had energy for a Transfuse. Now gonna go for that Spire, the Greater Spire, in fact, and it will go down! What a big play by Fnatic Alive! I cannot stress how huge that was, because now that completely delays Greater... Uh, yeah, it delays the Greater Spire, and it delays the Brute Lords for, like ever so um yeah alive just bought himself a huge ticket right there with that play and now it looks like he's sending more marines here they uh, just kind of walking on the creep and now he's gonna stim i guess he's gonna try to take out the zerg the zerg highways first but uh on the highway he greets the monster trucks and uh you don't want to run into those ultralists so uh, that was the end of that. It does look like we have another medevac here, but look at that Zergling, man. Kind of hiding by the uh, Staglatites. St Stagla Staglamites? I think that's the right word for it. I, don't, I never knew, like, Staglamites, Staglacite. It's hard to remember. Anyways, the two, the, the, the couple Marines get in here, but there's, like, a, a Spore Grid now. So those Marines will not get the Spire. In fact, there's not even a Spire here. I wonder where it is. Hold that thought. We do have Marines coming to the top, and they will take out... The Queen and a bunch of drones as well, dude. Alive is just ripping through marine, uh, ripping through uh, drones here and killing off critical tech structures as well. But um, you know, while he's playing a, a great game, I still think Bly is totally in this because, like I said before in the beginning of this cast, as Zerg, you get up to great, you get up to Brutal and Fester, and Terran has a very hard time playing against that. So we'll see. I love the position on that sensor tower too. These infested turns are like, I wish I had U two three eight shells so I could reach that sensor tower. Oh nostalgia, man! Don't you guys remember U two three eight shells? Those are awesome. It's just like the randomest number and combination that Blizzard could think of, but it sounds epic and awesome regardless. Look at the uh, look at the. Is that a changeling? No, that's a marine. So uh, marine also hiding by the the water cooler right there, just like the zerkling is hiding by the staglomites. A couple of Vikings and medivacs just trailing behind the zerk airspace. But this is it, man. Alive is getting ready to rock and roll a, and he has got a lot of tanks, marines, marauders. He's ready to go against ultralists. And Bly is forced to engage here. No, he will not fight. He's going to pull back, play it safe a little bit. A couple of Zerglings going around the backside here, looking to do some damage. But this is it, man. This could be the game if Alive takes out these hatcheries. And I'm sure he will take out this hatchery. Uh, Zerg forces, I don't know what Bly is doing. I think he's, oh, all right. So he's not max. He's waiting for his brood lords to come out before he fights. And <laughs> Bly's whole strategy here as well, I, if I fight there, I lose right now. So what I need to do is sacrifice some hatcheries and wait for my brood lords to come out. So he's making six brood lords right now. Oh, I, I, I have no idea where those brood lords are, by the way, guys. I'm trying to find them. I have no idea. So they are coming somewhere on the map, but he's lost so much damage, he's lost so much over so far, and there are the brood lords. So they have been sniffed out by... Uh, by the Terran player alive, he realized something weird was going on, and he knew that, you know, why haven't you attacked me yet? So he saw, he sees the Broodlords, and now he begins Viking, Raven, and Seeker missile production. 
And not to mention he just killed the whole Chalice Cavern, another hatchery, and Alive here could just pull out, man. I think this is the definition of a timing attack. If there was ever a timing attack, this is the best one I've ever seen because it hits right before Broodlords come. He gets, I don't know, way more than he ever could have bargained for. This is like the deal of a lifetime. He gets like three hatcheries, an ultra cavern, uh, <laughs> and now he pulls back with most of his army alive. So, I don't know, this is bad, but Bly's coming in for a drop. He's coming in. Look at the map awareness by Alive dropping down missile turrets, but it's a little too late as they are. Zerglings coming in your main base, and they are crack upgraded at 3 3, but Alive using the Labyrinth in his base to corner off and contain the Zergling threat. Very nice play so far. These Zerglings, I don't think they can do much. Look at the look at the base for uh, Alive. This is like Terran Tetris. He's, not only is Alive playing StarCraft 2, he's playing Tetris at home as well. That is how good he is in StarCraft 2. And I know, I know, I'm I'm all over Alive this game, but you know, he's just that damn good of a player. Alright, let, let's give Bly some love here. Is Bly gonna be able to come back in this game? He <laughs> he has like no hatcheries. He has th like three right now. Uh, he's trying to re get all of his bases. I think one thing going well for Bly is he's got a lot of money. That's for sure. But uh, he doesn't have any gas. And what's what good as Zerg are you with lots of money and no gas? I guess you can make a bunch of cracklings. Given the composition of a lot, actually that might that might not be a bad idea. You know, there's not there's no Hellions here. Um, so maybe just a million cracklings could be his keys to victory. Don't forget that's how White Row lost against. Uh, against Everdrone in Heart of the Swarms. It's still good, man. In the future, past, and the present, Cracklings have always been good. From Brood War to Wings of Liberty to Heart of the Swarm, you can always depend on the Crackling. Unless there's Hellions, then then they're not so good. Uh, well, one thing he's also doing well right now is he's blocking that command center from landing down. You know, what else he could make is a bunch of spine crawlers, and it looks like he's making four right now. A lot of Corruptors in Bly's army too, and that, eh, I don't know if he needs that many Corruptors, there really isn't that many Vikings in the air for Alive. Alive, uh, almost, it feels like to me, Alive doesn't have enough, look at these SCVs trying to kill off that Zergling. They got him, they got him, alright. Uh, it feels like Alive doesn't have enough Vikings here, and he gets fungled. Oh wow, could this actually be Bly's lucky break? Now the engagement point not the best, it's pretty choked off, but he kills off all the Vikings and now if he just had some Infestors alive he could fungle, he's going to be forced to engage. Uh, he does have Infestors alive and I cannot believe this, Bly is going to win the battle in the middle of the map. This is ridiculous right now. Is Alive actually going to lose this this battle? And consequently, when you lose your whole army, is Terran is not a good thing. Although, it looks like he's just got these mighty, mighty Thors. Three of them, in fact, just clobbering the Broodlords. And even a, <laughs> a missile turret coming down. Uh, not a missile turret, but an auto turret coming down here to help provide support fire. But all the Thors have gone down. And now Alive, of course, attacking with another party up here in the top. Cracklings will deal with that very easily, and Bly making a lot more Broodlords. Kind of, uh, kind of digging into his gas reserves there, but uh, you know he, he still has a he, he ate up his surplus, but you know that that's necessary right now. And I I can't believe this. Bly actually looks like he's back in this game. You know, for the first tw 20 minutes or so, I was thinking eh, this this might be a one one sided game for the rest of the match, but. I think Bly is looking pretty good now. We'll see what happens. Can Alive regain his dominance that he lost? Looks like he's going to lose some of these Marines and Marauders as well. Momentum has certainly swung in the fate in the way of the Zerg player. He's got momentum. He's got strength in numbers. He's got Brute Lords. So Bly is looking really good right now. And Alive just doesn't have the Air Force necessary to deal with Brute Lords. And like I said, I'm going to call upon what I said in the beginning of this cast one more time. But against Brute Lord Infester, Terran still doesn't have an answer to dealing with that. It's just a very, it's a very hard composition to fight against. And some Terrans experiment with what is going on here. Oh, we got some cracklings in the base. All right. Some Terrans experiment with... Uh, with Thors, some experiment with Ghosts, 
Some even go Sky Terran with Ravens, and it looks like that's what Alive's gonna go for. It's just depositing his, ul his uh, Marauders here, and he's gonna pick off a couple of Ultras. I think his whole strategy there was, all right, I know you're not making that many more Ultralisks, <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to drop my uh, Marauders and Marines here to clear supply for tier three units here. He's transitioning, I think he's transitioning away from Bio, and he's gonna be able to get off a hatchery here. Wow, alive, good job, and he gets a hatchery kill. The drones, what are the drones doing? I don't know why they ran back in there, but it looks like they aren't going to suffer too many casualties as the Ultras come to their save, come to their, uh, come to save them. And right now, it looks like we have Ghost coming, so it's like a combination of Raven, Ghost, Viking, this is a weird game, man, and it's getting pretty epic. 29 minutes in, I still don't know who's going to win this game. The Banks uh, favoring Terran slightly, and Alive is going to drop one more time. The two Spore Crawlers will kill the Medivac with three units inside, so this is not a very threatening drop at all. And I, uh, I think this is going to be cleaned up pretty easily, but the thing is, Alive is just being very proactive. He's the one being aggressive right now. He's the one attacking and, and putting the Zerg on the back foot. He's trying to regain momentum in this game, and I kind of like what he's doing. He's filling up the, the dead space here with uh, with Ghosts and Ravens, so he's he's really going for units here that will be able to combat Broodlord and Fester in the late game, and he's just clearing supply away while, uh, while this all goes on. There's something you don't see every day. Zerg player getting flyer attacks level three. So, yeah, man. I, I, this game seems like it's going to come down to, like, one big battle. And whoever wins that battle, I guess, is going to win the game. Hey, guess what? That Zergling is still chilling by the Staglamites. I know for sure somebody in the YouTube comments out there is going to say, that's not the right word for these buildings. I don't even know if it is. It might be like staglamite, stagla, staglam, staglasite. I don't even know. Uh, anyways, we do have ship weapons level three coming as well from Fnatic Alive, so he will be on par with the Zerg player. Just throwing away his bio now at this point to the to to Bly. And you know, Bly knows that the bio is getting tossed out right now. If I were Bly, I would really be wary about having too many ultras in my army. Uh, what is this? The queen is like hide. With the assistance of the Comsat, uh, the Queen will not make it out alive. These Marines and Marauders looking to do whatever they can. A couple of in a lot of Infestors coming in here. And those units are going to die. Anyways, that's what I was saying. If I were Bly, I would think about clearing out some of my Ultras. I wonder how many he's got. Okay, just four. So it, it's, it's not an excessive amount. In fact, I think both of these players, <laughs> they both have very strong late game compositions. And I'll admit, Elias might not look that good on paper uh, right now on paper, but in the hands of a Terran player who can micro, with the AoE splash of Ravens nuking, with their Seeker missiles, and, uh, you know, the ghost uh, sniping and whatnot, it can be very, very good. It just requires a crap ton of micro. And look at this, we have four nuclear bombs being created right now back at home Fnatic Alive is he's got Project Manhattan going on right now he's making four nukes this is like Manhattan times two because he's making not two but four and well we will see what happens a couple of infested Terrans here they're like what's up you should <laughs> they're talking to to the other side they're like you should come over here and defect with us it's much better over here <laughs> And Alive is now going to send over a gift package for those infested Terrans to remind them of what they once were. Actually, we have a nuclear bomb going on right now, and it is going on in the top left-hand hatchery. Oh, but Bly pulls the drones out of the way. Civilian ca casualties here will be limited. And just a lot of larva and drones and whatnot going down. Nothing too serious. That ghost gets an EMP, though. What a G! He nukes and he EMPs the Infestors. Now, the EMP didn't hit a lot of Infestors, but still, actually, it did hit quite a few, draining 100 energy from every single one. We have another drop going on inside the main base. The Hive is under stress right now. Meantime, a drop of Ultras coming in here, and I can't even see it because there's so many Vikings. It's a cloud of Vikings as another nuclear bomb is going off. I'm trying to find it, but I don't know where it is, and I guess I'm not going to see that nuclear bomb, so... 
I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I guess it landed over here and hit something over here. Nothing too serious, but Alive is just all over the place right now. Just attacking left and right. Has Marines all over the place. Dropping another tactical nuclear missile. He's got two nuclear missiles. In fact, one over here to kill off the crawlers to let his units out. And one over here, but the ghost died because there was an overseer over this entire zone. Oh, 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 oh my god, no! Oh, wow! Bly almost walked into the trap, and now the genius of... The, Zer the Terran player comes to mind because that entire, that double nuke strategy right there was designed, it was designed from a lie from the get-go to pull the Zerg army over here. He didn't care about this nuke dying, but then he wanted the Zerg army to come back and pick off the straggling units inside his base, and he hid the red dot amongst the grid of crawlers, and that almost, that almost worked. That was... Genius, and that is why Alive is one of the greatest StarCraft II military geniuses of his time. That's why he's a Terminator. He exterminates with nuclear missiles. Anyways, we have a huge battle going on here. PDD comes down, so the Ravens cannot shoot, or the uh, Corruptors cannot shoot. But the Infestors get a great set of Fungal Growths down. The defecting Infested Terrans are nowhere to be seen as the Brood Lords come in from the north side. This is an epic StarCraft II battle panoramic across two screens and it looks like the Terran is going to pull back or the Zerg is going to pull back as a Seeker missile! Whoa! That was an epic Seeker as we have another nuclear launch coming out over this Zerg hatchery and a couple of drones are not going... Yeah, they actually are going to make it out of their life. Just barely. So very good awareness here from Bly, but he did take an... Just an... It was not a nuke, but it was more like a pocket nuke. It was a P-nuke right inside of his Zerg army. Uh, that Seeker missile did tons of damage, and he's going to have to slowly regenerate that. Yes, a Zerg, you do get biological regeneration over time, but it takes a while. And now, uh, yeah, when you've got a, a somebody using an op sniper rifle taking out your units, how are you going to regenerate your HP? You cannot. And here comes another drop from Alive. Both players here dropping down to about 100 supply, but Alive is taking the lead. He's going to get another hatchery. And that was a critical hatchery. The Great fungal, by the way. That was a critical hatchery because this hatchery right here and this hatchery right here at the 6 o'clock. Oh, my mules. Look at the income. <laughs> Anyways, those two bases are critical. These are the neutral bases on the map that you must mine if you want to maintain a 38-minute plus game in StarCraft. And these mules are going... Look at... They just dropped down, and they're going to suck this mineral node dry. That's so... Look at how many mules there are here. The income is insane. And Alive just resupplied his army with, I would say, like three to 4,000 minerals just like that. So his army supply has jumped up to 143. Both players were, were poor right there. They were like third world countries, but then they just got a infusion of cash and it looks like the Zerg just trying to reclaim this hatchery so he too can get an infusion of cash but I don't I don't know man you don't really have meals as Zerg so that's that's one of the drawbacks both players mineral or uh, SCVs and drones by the way very very low and look at this ghost oh the fungal comes down and the ghost pulls away at the last second great micro by alive who realizes if he stays away from the fungal, he can get the money. EMP is just waiting here for the Vikings to die. And no, actually, he's not going to go in for an EMP. I guess, yeah, there was an Overseer here. So smart from him. And right now, Alive is just sitting back, waiting and playing the wait game because he knows that he's got the mulage going on. He's got the nukage going on, too. There is the nuclear missile, the... Overseer immediately spotting the location out. And the crawlers, they're out of there, man. Hasta la vista, baby. And I guess the nuke doesn't really hit anything. Meanwhile, big attack coming up up here. A couple of Broodlords morphing out in no man's land. But the fungal comes down to keep them alive and safe. Great fungals here from Bly. Who needs uh, more fungals? I'm surprised not continuing to fungal here. And yeah, there we go. A couple, couple of good chain fungals there. 
as the Ghost comes around the backhand side, is going to launch a nuclear missile! It's the Zerg is encapsulated on both sides here, but he kills off the Ghost. Oh, that was so critical. And now will Bly have enough against the Terran Marauders and Tanks? All he's got left are infested Terrans, and in a situation like this, I think it's time to call on the Defectors! That's right! Join us! Come to the dark side! But nope, too many Marines coming in here from all angles. Meanwhile, a couple of cracklings down to this expansion, but you know what? The minerals have been sucked dry already, so I don't really know how much you know, damage this actually does to Alive. I really don't. He, he doesn't need SCVs and mules anymore. He's mined it all out pretty much. So now it becomes a battle of Bly's Infestors, an energy-based unit versus Alive's Marines and Marauders. But Bly has run out of energy! He doesn't have enough infested Terrans. Oh my god, this game is out of control. And it looks like the Cracklings did kill off everything. There is still a little bit of money left to be made, but not a lot. And no, if Bly loses his Broodlord, he doesn't have any more real units. And you know what? Bly can shoot out as many infested Terrans as he wants all day long, but Alive will just stay away from them. He doesn't need to fight them, or maybe he will, just to make a point. <laughs> stay to the good side, stay on the Terran side, if you will. And uh, there goes another hatchery. Not a critical blow, though. Most of the money was out here. It, it's really, it's 73 supply to 57 right now. Bly gets a huge fungal growth, but he doesn't have enough energy to chain fungal, so the medevac will heal all these marines up. He, oh, if Bly had waited, now he's dropping changelings. Now you know he's in trouble. <laughs> I was going to say, if Bly had just waited for enough energy for a chain fungal, I think he would have been all right. He still, he still has a lot of investors here. This is going to come down to an epic last chance fight here for Bly and for Alive. I am officially, like, I am, my head has imploded now many times over. Bly just waiting for enough energy on all of his investors for a huge chain fungal. And Alive, all he's got to do, I think, just spread out his units like this. Like, exactly like that. Keep his units as spread out as possible. Oh, more mining going on down here. There is still one fresh base up at this expansion, and the meals are dropping down. Uh, drones trying to distance mine, and this has to be stopped at all costs from the Zerg player. It looks like Bly coming for some subterranean attacks, comes in with the infested Terrans, takes out all the tanks in the middle, which is good. Those are That's energy for free for a very expensive unit, and now he's going to go for the hidden mining black operation expansion. He's going to shoot out the infested Terrans, guys. I I'm whispering, I don't know why, but he is going to be able to kill off several meals. It looks like alive with the wherewithal to hide the meals away or at least push or run them away to keep them alive for another day. One other thing to note here is alive as he's killing off structures has to fight against broodlings and he's losing medevacs who doesn't want to lose against medevacs so the broodlings actually play a big factor here because if you're going for an elimination game you really don't want to kill off structures all day long with just this many marines so we will see what happens. Shooting out two Infestor Terrans to kill off a Marine. And uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's a lot of mining going on here right now. And Alive should throw up a missile turret or some form of detection. Oh, that Infested Terran. Join the dark side. <laughs> Ghost's like, nope, see ya. And, uh... Oh god, if he has enough for a Fungal here, this could be a money. Fungal growth, the Infested Terran pops out. Hello! And goodbye. That was a great fungal growth. It's 27 supply to 76 right now, but I don't think it's over yet because Bly does have a lot of infestors alive still. But this base cannot be allowed to mine, and the ravens are overhead now, so this is looking bad for Bly as this game continues to go on. This is like the one of the most epic ZBTs I've gassed in a while, by the way, guys, I have to say. Beautiful game. I, I love Wings of Liberty. This is some high-level stuff. Will Bly be able to make something out of this and break that hatchery, or that break that CC down? Because, you know, as this continues to mine, you can see there is production for the Terran player, and there is absolutely nothing for the Zerg player. So we will see. There's one queen and several infestors on the field right now. That is the army of Bly. Oh, the EMP! That was such a good EMP shockwave. Bly needs to burrow underground right now. 
And I don't know why he's not. The ghost is sniping away. It's a Capitan and Bly calls. GG. Wow, that was insane. And uh, I hope I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. That was absolutely crazy. One of the best Zerg versus Terrence I have casted. Fanatic alive. The Terminator Terran takes it to the whole nother level and he goes on. By the way, guys, I'm just making up that nickname for him on the spot. He's, I don't know if he's actually called the Terminator Terran, but I thought it was cool. And he just won against Bly. That was beautiful. If you guys enjoyed this casting, do check me out. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at HD Starcraft. You guys can find me there. And I will have more Starcraft 2 casts coming out for you guys in the near future. Don't go anywhere. This is HD Starcraft, and I am signing out.